Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alan McPhee, this is Doing Philosophy, and our topic is love. We raised the question, what is love? And now we're going to explore that more detail into that. Today's focus will be on the emotions, the emotion, because remember, when we're doing philosophy, we're trying to do a deep dive. Deep dive means we have to go into detail, look at every little definition that structures, that's become the foundation of how we define this concept of love, the idea, okay? So right now we're gonna dive into what we call the emotions. This is our third installment. Um, on this topic, what is love? And the second time around, we developed this PowerPoint to kind of organize our thinking. When I'm speaking freely as a philosopher, I may be going to different places, but in my brain, in my mind, everything is compartmentalized. There's a structure in a particular way because that's what we do. As we get whittled down the ideas more and more, we begin to create compartments of how to understand things. And this is what I did for you so that we can have a conversation. So <clears throat> we look at this idea of love and there's so many things to talk about, all right? And remember fundamentally, when it says philosophy, that means you, the listener are supposed to be gaining your own ideas. You're supposed to be debating me back and forth. And if I say something that's true to you because you have your own evidence why it's true, you continue. If something is slightly false or you need to think about it more, you do so, all right? So it's not about me just giving this information. I'm trying to get you to engage in the process. So right now, one of the key topics is, are these ideas of the emotion. If you wanna say what is love and it's some sort of emotions, Let's take a little time and deep dive on the idea of emotions. <clears throat> Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, depending on how you look at it, conversation about the emotions is very, very complicated, controversial in many, many ways. So that's why you see an entire deep dive on the emotions in themselves. I use some classification that just allow me to arrange the various ideas here um, my research shows that there's an inconsistency how this thing is spread out. Um, there are primary emotions, just a, a name I use, secondary emotions. Um, the mind, um, the emotions are part of the mind, not necessarily the body. There's, and those are the easy things for us to work with. I'm gonna work with those first. And this idea of subjectivity and the contribution of science and very important for philosophers, objectivity and understanding the emotion. Right now, I'm only focused on one of these ideas, and that's the idea of primary emotions. So the, what's here is that when you say emotions, you right now, listen to me, have a sense of what these mean, okay? You have an idea that emotions, you already use the words emotions already. You use various concepts of emotion. To begin our discussion, we have to begin where everyone else already have a grasp. They already know that to be true. And that's what we're doing right now. So primary emotions, um, what I mean by primary emotions are those fundamental emotions that seem to determine the course of our life. Emotion that we refer to a lot, emotions that are motivators, emotions that um, kind of define people's characters and personalities. I have, um, discovered several of them that's, and maybe you out there can tell me more emotions, okay? The first one are passions. <clears throat> we are passionate about our work. We are passionate about fixing our car. We're passionate about preparing for um, a vacation that we've been working on in the background. <clears throat> Another emotion that emerges is the um, is the emotion of love, all right? So we, um, love is gonna be the main focus of this entire study. 
And try, for me to try to put a name or definition is kind of really difficult other than that we do a lot of things for love. We kill for love. We, we marry for love and do all kinds of amazing things for the sake of love. <clears throat> Another one is pride. Pride is just having a certain amount of self-esteem. You feel good about yourself. Things are going great. And so you feel proud, you feel good about what you've accomplished. <clears throat> joy is another one where you enjoy driving, you enjoy walking to the park, um, you enjoy uh, watching movies. And the one thing I wanna say right now as I'm tossing these emotions out, these words are supposed to mean different things. They don't mean all the same thing, all right? And a lot of time we use these words as if they all mean the same thing. And when you're doing that, it literally means that um, your intelligence is like zero. Emotion is zero because using the same word to describe everything in your life. Um, satisfaction. Might not be able to see that one, but satisfaction is one of those emotions that we don't talk much about, but it is a very subtle emotion about when we reach a certain level of satisfaction, just like the word say. You may want to become a millionaire and you get to be a millionaire. And when you have, you know, $2 million in the bank, suddenly it's revealed that you're not satisfied. You get 10 million and you're not satisfied. There is an emotional state for satis of satisfaction. Someone can be happy with only $100,000 in the bank or even $50,000 in the bank. Others cannot. So we have to look at that emotion. Then there's the emotion of, um, it's called devotion. We're devoted, like you could be a devoted employee. In the religious community, you're devoted to that particular religion, you're devoted to God. In a relationship, you're devoted to that man, you're devoted to that woman, all right? So devotion is an, a separate energy. There is an act of being devoted, but there is an emotion there that drives that, that behavior. <clears throat> and there's conscience. Perhaps least talked about as an emotion, <clears throat> conscience is our internal compass that guides us morally, from, that we have an inner sense that something, that things are wrong or not wrong. So some people may not even describe it as an emotion, but it is you know, technically an emotion. You have to see it classified as an emotion. If you have different ideas on how to call these, or maybe think conscious is something else other than emotion, I don't see how, please describe it. I will say it's a little bit like satisfaction that is very, very subtle and is so pervasive over everything, right? But there is a, a thing called conscience. And if you have it, it guides you to more right and wrong just based on the feeling alone. And then happiness. That is probably as troubling to talk about happiness as it is to talk about love, right? And then, but in this catch sense here, I'm just gonna give a working definition for happiness because I could do an entire series just on happiness. Happiness in this sense here, in terms of as an emotion, right? It is really a general emotion. When all your emotions are in balance, they're functioning well, they're working into, uh, well with each other, that's the state of happiness. That would include both the primary emotions and the secondary emotions, which means um, more like those negative emotions of hate, despair, and things like that. So, so I would say happiness is when all the emotions are functioning well, they are balanced in the person. That's the best way to look at it. It's the state of being. Not a, it is a particular emotion, but it's achieved when all the other emotions finds balance. <clears throat> now, I'm given verbal definitions, but if we're gonna do this philosophically, <clears throat> these are names, names that relate to particular feelings. In you right now, I'm just sitting here, is there a difference when you use the word love and joy? Do you enjoy driving or do you love driving? Is there a difference? You love your cat, okay? Is that the same as uh, say loving your husband? Or is that the same emotion? Or do you enjoy the company of your cat and you love your husband? Do you enjoy the company of your, uh, of your, of your husband, okay? So do you use the same word in all situations? If you need to, find this out because as we explore philosophically and I put out definitions and you've taken my written words as, as uh, the truth here, you're not gonna be on the same page as I am because you need to have a sense of how those words, what kind of feelings go with those particular words out here, all right? So it's not about memorizing definition. What do these words mean to you emotionally, feeling-wise, right? 
once you can find your children what these different words mean, then you'll be able to have objective communication about other people as they share their feelings and things. You'll also be able to use these words with more precision. And the minute you do that, you'll see, you begin to use the word love slightly differently. When I did that, I stopped using that word so frequently, <laughs> okay? I use it less and less and less, okay? Because there's other words of the emotional category that can be used to describe those feelings, those emotions, okay? So these are primary emotions. I believe they are fundamental. If there are more, if you think there are some big emotions out there that I left out, please share them. If you have any definition, in fact, in the work that um, down below in the comments, if you have any um, ideas, any definition, if you could define any of these for me, for the rest of the people on the channel, just go ahead and um, uh, write, write it out, write out those definitions for you. What is happiness for you? What is pride for you? What is devotion for you? So begin to give me your ideas because if you're gonna uh, benefit from this, sharing your ideas is, is very important. You know, sharing your ideas is very, very important. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's all for now because we need to do this in bite size. We talked about the emotions. Now you go, go forward and start thinking about these various type of emotions, perhaps look them up and then try to figure out what do these, to what feeling do these words refer to you? Or do they refer all the exact same feelings? Which ultimately is gonna lead us to the kind of conclusion for you that the word love has no meaning because it just means it feels good to you, all right? So let's try to break these concepts down and to get a, a, a sense of it for you. What do these words mean for you? So <clears throat> I have finished. I believe I finished, kind of like, I mean, the topic of the day. That's what I'm feeling right now. Um, did I miss, leave anything out I should have said? Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, uh, I don't think I left anything out. I probably have some reservation in that the emotions we use the words, but we don't use, refer them back to their reference. So what do they mean? Like, if I say cell phone, you understand the word, but you know what it refers to. You know the reference of the word. So you can see examples of it. Emotions being internal, subjective, it's more challenging. So this discussion we're having only is gonna work if you have accepted that you have emotion, if you think you don't have any emotions, any emotion, it's just a chemical running through your brain, there are no emotions, then this conversation does not work. But if you believe you have emotions, love, hate, pride, humility, as David Hume would say, if you believe you have emotions, then this conversation is for you. The question I'm asking you right now is to what feelings, to what vibrations do these things lead to for you and when you have those kind of feelings what do they motivate you to do and after you have explained that for yourself then you could research and see what other people have said see if they it goes to the same direction and in this way we're actually doing some real philosophy you are doing some real philosophy right as always when someone asks you who's your favorite philosopher you know you like I said, and not Aristotle. Now, not if you, not Aristotle, all right? You got to go to, yes, you got to say it right. Alan McPhee is your favorite philosopher. Until next time. <laughs>